uh, there is a one Shan ethnic group. They actually recorded and interviewed 625 women who involved be being raped. But when it was actually brought to UN Security Council and when UN repatriate asked Burmese official, you know, that's as a, like you know, using rape as a victims in Burma, particularly ethnic area, the Burmese officials said that, how can this scenario be true in Burmese culture? You know, like, you know, so which is like, you know, they have a, there's like, you know, there's like, you know, safe, saving face value, you know, like, you know, that's also really the, like, you know, undone. So, like, you know, even though law, law are there, like, you know, how they interpret, who interpret, how do they implement, you know, like, you know, so this is also important to address. And in a country like, I would assume that, like, India or Burma, like, you know, the corruption is right, you know, like, you know, even though, like, the person went to bring to the rape case to the police, you know, like, you know, the perpetrator can pay, money and get away with it. And uh, talking about this issue, a lot of Burmese women have been raped. Because of the uh, a conflict in Burma, many Burmese are forced to leave Burma. Two to three million Burmese are living in Thailand. Three out of four women are illegal. And so like I said, there is like rape is part of their daily life. Sexual violence is part of their daily life because of everybody you know, like, you know, come and go and, you know, like, and exploit them, you know, so, but they cannot go to the police. Because, and it's really interesting, interestingly, when I interviewed them, who they afraid most? Police. Mm -hmm. So that's a kind of, it's really also, it's actually, and also in Thailand, major trafficking of Burmese, you know, Burmese traffickings are owned by and operated by Thai police. So, so like, you know, these are also like, you know, you're part of the gender-based violence that taking everybody's part of their share of cake. Mm 